Hello, Teresa here from just outside South East London. Um, I want to make this very quick video today. It's a quick pre-Christmas video. Now, what we're going to do is make something using all our scraps or some of the scraps that we've acquired over the past year. Um, we're going to make a background fabric from um, strips of machine sewn or hand sewn fabric scraps that we have in our rag bag or bit box we're also going to use our favorite applique knit slow stitch um, maybe some cross stitch and we're going to make this and it's a needle purse or case um, is that that's coming out up there lovely isn't it I'm just gonna make that a bit bigger smashing and that could go in there I mean I think actually it would make a really nice purse anyway so anyway this is the project for today a um, hand stitch slow stitch needle case now before we actually start this I've got very, very few names to read out today. I don't know if they've gone somewhere else because the numbers are increasing. But today, there's only, what, about seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine names. So anyway, I'll do the names first and then we'll move on. So the first one, and a big welcome to you all. First one, Claire Rogers. Family Rich 77, and that's Rebecca. Um, I should remember that, Rebecca, because that's my daughter's name, too. Kathy Martin, Glenn Leader, Kath Avalon, Janet Monet, or Monet, Beth Yuhi, Yuhi, that's U H E, and Deha Madoodles, Deha Madoodles. And last but really not least, and that's Pratiksha Mishara. And Pratiksha is all the way from India. So, big welcome to you, Pratiksha. It's the first time that you've joined us, isn't it? So, I hope you're all keeping well. And, um, you know, and <laughs> you're looking forward to January and the spring when things are going to change and look really, really good. So these are the fabric scraps that I've chosen from my rag bag. Funnily enough, they're mostly all from swatches. Um, and I haven't used them before. So um, there's quite a few of them. Donations. Once again, they, these are all donations. And um, look at these. Aren't they gorgeous? So these will be sewn together now. Right sides together. Let's have a look. I'll be sewing these right sides together. I don't think it really matters on the plain fabrics. And I'll be sewing along here, along the short, the short length here. Um, only probably three, maybe three in a row. Yeah, I'll probably sew three in a row um, and make as many strips as I have fabric here. So I'll be back in a mo, and I'll have these all sewn together. So here they are now, and I only used nine, and I've trimmed them. I've trimmed all the way round just to make it easier to work with. Um, it's a bit difficult getting this in the screen because it's so long now. Now bearing in mind, we're on, we're aiming to make something with a background of eight and a half by twelve inches, which is actually that size now we need a little bit more fabric patchwork fabric scrap fabric to play with because we'll be doing a lot of sewing and therefore we'll be giving it a lot of seam allowances so although we're not dressmaking so we're not going to be using the five eighths of an inch seam allowance we will still be making our scrap patchwork small every time we add a row to it now to make sense of this i'll just start cutting it and hopefully it'll all fall into place 
For those of you who don't have a sewing machine, don't feel excluded because you can do all of this by hand. Now, if you decide to hand sew these together, just use a very, very small running stitch or a back stitch. So let's start cutting these. Now, the background will be hidden with slow stitch and a plique, but we still want it to look nice. I actually started out making the needle a pin case and it was to be something else <laughs> and it wasn't until sort of halfway through I thought oh, what I need is a, probably a new pin case needle case because when this is all over believe me I'm going to do some travels and um, I'm going to exercise my wings a little bit and I will need some new sewing stuff travel stuff um, and I thought, oh, that will make a nice travel a travel case. So that is how that came about, really. Now, all we're going to do is cut these in strips. Um, let's have a look. Maybe two. I'm wondering, yeah, maybe two. We cut these in two because, as I said, we'll be you we'll be sewing them back together. And each time we do that, we'll be taking about maybe three quarters of an inch it off the sides two sides I should say now i have got a rotary cutter um but for this demonstration i'm actually going to use my scissors because at the moment they'll be quicker and i can't find my ruler to use with this anyway so I'm, all i'm doing is going to cut straight down the center now this is why if you do it by hand as well you'll need a very small stitch because you'll be cutting through the sewing and if you've got a loose stitch the stitching is likely to come undone so now we don't have to do this exact through this one so i'm going to avoid the seams at the moment and i'm going to cut through this one now I'm going to replace these, just replace them and sew them back together in strips, just sew them, oh, I might like that one there actually, although well, we've got two reds there but it doesn't matter, and I'm going to sew them back together and now you'll see how this starts to shrink when I bring it back after sewing it you'll see that it's beginning to look a bit oh like Christmas <laughs> I couldn't resist that it's beginning to look a little a lot smaller okay so that's how it is at the moment I'm just going off now to sew those again now they've sewn together and this piece is getting longer it's also getting narrower if you can see that now the edges of the new fabric are now hidden under this I'm now going to cut across here in strips now these don't have to be regular shapes I'm just going to trim trim these and that will make it easier to sew it to um, trim the edges I should say that will make it easier to sew to another seam right so let's push this here now I think maybe two I don't think I'm going to get three no because once you take the seam allowances either side there'll be nothing left so I shall cut these into strips now now at this point we're not aiming for even squares even patchwork we just aim for a nice piece of fabric that we can use as a backing fabric but more than that we're using up some of the scraps that we have created during the course of making these videos it's a marvelous way really isn't it providing some fabric for a project without having to go and spend money 
But how many of us can get out at the moment? We're still in tier three. Is a nuisance. And what with Christmas two weeks away, it's going to be a very different Christmas this year. And for me, Christmas is the big time of year. But I don't think there'd be any family, apart from my daughter, who um, who's here with me. As for my sons, I, I don't know whether I'll get to see them or not. So never mind. A whole new year soon. Things are going to look great. On that nice positive note, I'm going off now to sew these together. I might play around with them just a little bit move them around who knows who knows this is the the fun thing of doing this i could put one there but i could sew one I could sew no not there i don't want them matching see i could put another one that way and then this one there now it's taking on a a little bit of a square shape so perhaps that one there or even join two together now to make this one longer and then run it down there and then i'll have a square Ooh, decisions decisions i shall play around and then i'll get back what I will do is sew them together and I'll get back to you as soon as I've sewn them together. And that's finished. I've added another row to the side down here and along there because I have this sneaky feeling that once I start slow stitching, which just pulls the fabric in a little bit, I'd end up with a really tiny piece of work. So that is why I've added two more rows there. Now, this now, is the backing for this fabric. So we'll turn that over. Now I have pressed this. I've pressed it open. I've not paid too much attention to the seams as you can see. That's not the point of this. The point is to make the fabric. This is going to be hidden so who cares. I've trimmed off some of the more bulky seams, especially at the crossing points, just so they weren't too thick and they'd poke through the work. So I'm quite happy with that. Now this will go over here. Um, where should I put it? I'm going to place it there so we've got a little bit of overhang there and we have a little bit there. I should pin this all the way round and then I'm going to tack it so as normal you don't need to see me tacking you know what tacking stitches are so my next task off camera is to pin all the way round and I will pin it makes it easier and then I should tack nice big tacking stitches like the running stitches all the way round. So the tacking's been done and I've had a few ideas about how I'm now going to decorate this. I'm not going to do exactly like the other one but I found this. This was given to me. I think it's a child's um, head headband, headdress. Someone picked that up for about 50p in High Street Shop and thought I might be able to use it. And well, they thought, right, because I've taken some of the flowers off and I've taken them to pieces. So these are the centre bits, the bits that were in the middle, and they were held down with like a clip affair at the bottom. So I spent some time, they were quite difficult to take to pieces, but anyway, I've, I've done that. Um, and there are large ones, and the contrasting smaller ones so that worked out well and the color this is really great <laughs> this was heaven sent you could say the colors reflected in the background now this was purely by coincidence there is yellow which is going to reflect the yellow ones and the white um, I'm probably stretching a point here but there are bits of the, that's cream but on the screen it looks white there are 
bits and pieces of white in here as well so I think um, at this stage I'm going to use these I'm going to take some more to pieces and I'm just going to arrange them on the background I'm, be I'm thinking of spring now something nice and cheerful now I, I'm thinking off the top of my head now so I might actually change this as I go along but I will pin them in place hang on a minute I'll pin them in place um, um, um. Well, I want to use some I might use some net not these nets they're too thick far too thick and they're going to cut, uh, hide the colour completely behind now if I don't use the net what I'll do I'll put them all down and then I'll tack them just clip them like like I do just clip through them in rows if I'm going to use the net I'll just hold them in place not take the pins out so I'll somehow hold them in place and I will put the net down uh, especially if it's a big piece of net like this which will cover the whole lot so I'll cover put the net down and then I will pin through the net like so this net is very big and it's making it it's caught up on the flowers so imagine that it might not necessarily be this piece of net well it might be as well because this is quite nice <laughs> once it's folded out so this is what I would do if I use a big piece of net I'll cover that up completely so the flowers are now underneath where I want them and then I will pin them through the net I'll pin the net of course I'll have cut the net to size I'll pin them through the net and pin the edges and then tack I'll tack right the way across now that is the plan at the moment but as we both know it's likely to change but I don't think it's going to change that much now the alternative as I played around with a second ago this is my favoured I think this is what I'm favouring at the moment but I haven't had any time to really think about this so this is as I said off the top of my head the alternative is to find all the small pieces of net I have all the sheer pieces of fabric and do them individually so they've each have a different piece of net and that way we get more of the bright colours shining through because they won't all be covered up hmm. oh that's a difficult one so I'll make a start on that after I've decided what to do and then as soon as I've made a decision and made a start um, you'll be the first to see it <laughs> okay and voila here we have the piece all tacked down nice long tacking stitches clipping each flower right the way through in lines the lace has been secured as well with the tacking and as you can see the scissors go between the two the lace and the background fabric i did play around with putting two um two pieces of laces on top of the flowers because the one didn't seem to have much effect i looked at, at this again and i thought it looked really flat with just one layer of net so what I've done in different areas, I've added small squares of lace <laughs> over the grey. And I think, looking at it face to face, more or less, it's given it a little bit more depth. Look, you can see there's a little piece there, not. And you see that's coming up there. So that is one area that I've tacked some down and there's other areas. Now I was lucky enough to have a little bit of lace over or net I should say from this project and the lace had um, 
swirls of sequins on it um, if I lift this up you might be able you can just see them here around here around here and they're shining so I'm going to do basically the same as I've, I did on this one I'm going to start off my slow stitch by following one of these curves and starting from there so this curve it could be anyone curve of sequins will form the first row of my slow oh not the first row it will form the um, design inspiration if you like for my first row of slow stitch and I'll hold this up again and you can see that here if you can see this row of sequins here all the way around here and the way the slow stitch follows that line and that is how I got this curly pattern and that was simply by following one row of sequins and everything else just fell into place after doing that one row it's amazing isn't it so that's what I'm going to do now just to step back a bit all these small pieces the odds and ends of this net the net that I used in the beginning for this one um, have all, all been tacked down but this time, you know, I never know whether to let the clock just to be quiet while he he does his stuff. So I'm going to raise my voice. The tacking this time has gone across the first row of tacking. So all the net, all the flowers are now fully secured. If I can pick out a little area here, you can see the tacking is going that way and then it's going that way. So all the net, flowers, lace, everything now is secure and ready. Oh, there's a pin. And ready to be sewn down. So far, um, I followed the line as I said I was going to do. I think it was around that one. I've lost it a little bit, but I think it's around that one. I've used three strands of embroidery thread. And I initially started using the spring colours like the lime green and the lemon, a little bit of orange. But as, as it progressed, I realised that some of these colours, particularly the lime green here, um, and there's another one that I can't even pick out because it has almost sunk into the background where they were so light and pastel. Um, so... I changed my mind and I thought it needs to have a deeper colour. The colours need to be changed to something deeper. So I've actually now tried to bring in the deeper colours from the background, not just the yellow. As you can see, I did. I have brought the yellow in from the, the flowers. But I'm also introducing red, a deep red. And I've started that here and here. And at the moment, I think it's only one, yeah, it's just one single line of red. So that is the way forward at the moment, bringing in some of the deeper colours from the background. I'm also going to bring in some blue. There's some really nice blues here, and they're quite a nice deep colour. Hopefully they'll be seen as well. I intend to go through every flower with the slow stitch to hold it in place. I'm not going through every petal, but I will be going through every flower just to make sure that it's not going to wriggle free. So I've made a start with these. Um, well, in fact, there's only two yellow flowers I haven't been through. And, oh, I've been through all the white. I've uh, been through the leaves as well. So anything that's been applied, like the lace as well, lace there, lace here, I'm going to slow stitch through to hold it in place <laughs> finish the slow so. stitches here and i use uh, um different size lengths of stitching for interest i've got very tiny stitches around here and much longer ones here that's to provide some contrast between long and short which is one of the elements of design and artwork so that's a deliberate thing i've introduced 
pinwheels we've done these before and cross stitch and these are to provide a little bit of added interest and texture if you you possibly can't see the texture from there but you can hear it <laughs> i hope i hope oh my nails are really dreadful i've been inking so you'll have to excuse my my terrible hands areas of plain calmness not much stitching there at all set against the busy areas lots of stitching so that is another contrast and all the contrasts are to provide texture and interest so that is why we have the areas plain free from stitches and they're really busy 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 lines here so I know now by now that most of you will know how to do this because we keep going over them but for anybody who's new and I know there are a couple of you I'm just going to show you now I've done this exaggerated circle in permanent ink but for goodness sake don't do that on your work I've only done this so you can see it if I were to do one of these like this you wouldn't see it the, the camera just wouldn't pick up the detail so these demonstrations I do are exaggerated so to do my demonstration I've used a big darning needle and thick wool and a nice beautiful hesse on a burlap I love that but when I did these I've used a very fine needle with a point and three strands of embroidery thread so I didn't I did this freehand as well I didn't draw um, a circle because I actually like the um, this one here if you can see this I actually like that that sort of rustic almost look not a true circle however I've noticed that one is so let's get back to this a knot in your thread okay nice knot and then you come up on the edge of your circle now go into the middle into the middle like so now this you're going to keep under your thumb under your thumb like this and then bring that up now it depends how close you want these your spokes together if you want them wide so you can see the background fabric then just space them as wide as you want them or together it's entirely up to you so we're going to bring the needle out there still holding that thread down with, with your thumb and pull that through it's your first stitch you're going to repeat that again hold that down with your thumb go back into the center and then back over to the edge I think it's the perimeter actually isn't it the perimeter <laughs> that just doesn't sit well does it when you're you're doing your art and your craft so we call it the edge so thumb down again and into the center into the center and out to the edge now all you're going to do is repeat that all the way round turning your fabric as you need to all the way round it's a lot easier with um on a larger piece a fabric this is so small that I keep catching the corners the edges there we go and you will end up with a very nice pinwheel now this is lovely for weaving for weaving between the spokes under and over the spokes see it's so easy and yet when you see it on someone's work you think oh my goodness I can't do that well yeah you can you really can because look how easy that is into the center underneath and out to the edge still holding that down 
And then I think we're probably getting one more there. And then you're going to just go under your very first stitch. Little pull into the back and knot it off. Look, look how nice that looks as well. Well, I love that. I love that. It's just screaming out to be uh, woven, isn't it? Weave through all those spokes. So that is pinwheel. I've actually woven through two of these. That one and that one. I've um, I wove through them in a the blue thread, but you can't. I don't think you can actually see them. So there's the pinwheel, and if you wanted to, you could just. Oh, I haven't knotted that. You need to knot that over and under and over, and that would look nice with a contrasting thread or a gold a metallic thread. And all you're doing is under and over, under and over. As many times as you like you might even fill it in now there we go and through to the back it's lovely isn't it I love that so that is the pinwheel and this is cross stitch so a knot through to the back and over now you're going to slant it oh that's in this on the screen right you're going to slant it this way now i am at an angle here so it's a bit difficult that way first leg that way then now you can take it through there or you can take it through here now embroidery theories purists i should say would say you know there's, there is a, an actual correct technique for doing this but as long as it looks as it should do and the back won't be seen it doesn't matter so that is the, the first cross and you just repeat that if you're doing a whole row and you want them all the same then you would keep the legs the bottom leg always go in that way so the top leg will go that way but when we do our work we're all about texture texture and contrast they are first leg so that might mean having long stitches against short stitches there is no right and wrong in your work nobody can tell you you've done it wrong because no nope, it's your work you make the rules so there we are that's cross stitch now you might think yeah that's really nice but it's a bit boring isn't it they're all the same so okay then that leg there and you might want a little short leg there Just play around, just make some marks, pretend it's a paintbrush and your, or a, a pencil, that's a good one, a pencil and you're learning to draw. Now what you're doing with your needle, your pencil, you're making marks and you're getting to know the fabric and the thread and you're getting to know what it can do and you can't go wrong. Not at all. You might think, oh, I'm bored with that now. I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay. So if you're like me, you've got a very short concentration span. Or not concentration span. Boredom threshold. If you're like me with a, a short boredom threshold, you might do a couple of cross stitches and suddenly think, no, it's time for some slow stitch. There you go. So you cross stitch and you slow stitch two there for the price of one. Right, sit those over there. Now the next thing is we're going to put this to one side now and think about the lining. Now I've already chosen the lining. Nice green to reflect the green that I have in here. So when the needle case is opened up, that's going to be showing that nice purse that will be showing and oh look how beautiful that is 
love green. Now I couldn't find my um, iron on violin or interfacing, so what I've done, I've used um, some calico, lightweight calico. It isn't as heavy as this. So it's just lightweight and it's just going to give that a little bit more body. I've, I pinned it and as you can see the stitches there, I've tacked all the way around there. So now it's ready to be sewn to this. So we're going to put right sides together like this and then pin all the way around. I changed my pins. I've got some really nice pick. Oh, just about to say, I've got some really nice pins there. Oh, that one must be a dud then. I think these are bridal pins, bridal fabric pins. Now I'm going to pin all the way around three sides. I'm going to go through down two long sides and a short side. Three sides have been machine sewn. Now I'm just going to trim off this excess. We don't want bulky, um, oh, bulky edges. This is very thick. So just going to trim down there on three sides. Right way. Now the short side that you leave open will be the side that goes inside here and is over sewn. So bear that in mind. If there's an end to this that you like and you want that to be your flap over there, you want that to, sh to um, show, then that is the end that must be machine sewn or hand sewn. And the end that you're going to have inside will be the end that you leave open. Okay, and that will be over sewn. So I like, no, oh, I like both ends. <laughs> Ooh, I like both ends, so it doesn't really matter which end um, which end I pin. I think I'll probably do this one. So I'm going to leave that end open because that is the end that will be uh, it will be pulled inside the right way, and then that will be tucked in and over sewn. And this end will be the flap that comes over and and will be the front flap so I'm going to get on with that and I'm going to machine sew this but as I said earlier you can do this with hand sewing if you're going to do this with back stitch or two rows of running stitch use your thread double with very small stitches and you might actually want to do two rows but, but you can do it by hand with hand stitch doesn't have to be machine sewn so I'm going to Clip the corners, but not too close to the stitching. This is the edge that hasn't been sewn yet, but I'm just going to trim it a little bit. And then, the best part, is pulling it in now to the right sides. So there we are. Now I'm going to give this a press. I'm going to pull out the corners here um, with a big pin. You can do this with the scissors, but as I always say, just be careful that your scissors don't go right the way through. I've had students who've done that, and their scissors have gone right the way through the corner. So I'm going to spend some time now pulling out the corners, and I'm going to press this down all the way round, all the way round, and then over sew this. 
over sew the end now over sewing is as it literally sounds over sewing from one side to the other and we have done this before and what I should do is just turn these in making sure that you turn them in the same amount you don't want one side longer than the other so we're going to turn them in like this and pin them together and I advise that you tack them so you will do that all the way along this edge so they're all folded in I've just That's missed that true. so I'll do the exaggerated demonstration on here right nice thread and you will have a short needle with a nice point to do yours knot do put a knot in there so you don't pull your thread through right over sewing now you'll have two edges like i was explaining on this you'll have the two edges like so and you're going to push that turn them in turn the rough end turn the end here inside what is now looking like a bag so the same with that side as well you're going to turn that in as well like so bearing in mind now this is the right side so you this is the right side this is the open side right side there and that will be the lining where the green is and you're going to pin it and tack it so now imagine that that has been tacked or basted all the way along there to keep them together and with your thread you're going to lose the knot in this seam so let's I'll start here between the two so take your needle in there and bring it out at one side now with the knot pop the knot between the two folds like that and lose it there you go right so over sewing from that side over to that side now because this is going to be seen you want your stitches small unless you want to make a feature of this and then you can have them as big and as wild as you want them but look just from one side to the other now I find it easy to keep the thread over this finger so you've got it over that finger and then you've got this finger holding it down at the back and that way you have control of it so you're coming back now that way now imagine these are tiny little stitches And there you go now you could make them long couldn't you you could make a feature and have them long or short you could do a blanket stitch there but for the sake of this demonstration I'm just making them small but another time we might do that all right over sewing really easy quick and strong there so as I say I'm now going to carry and do that I'm now going off to take the corners out push the corners out I'm going to give it a nice press all the way round and then I shall press these under making sure they're the same length I press those under I'll pin them tack them and then over sew and then we're Right, we're now getting to the exciting part because it's almost finished so this is the, the actual finished piece now now I have sewn it over sewed down here the opening now 
we need to divide it into thirds now so we have where's this one so we have the flap that comes over the back piece and the pocket so we're going to divide it into threes and it's it's actually shrunk it's shrunk by an inch and a half because that is now ten and a half inches so ten and a half inches by three is right each third needs to be three and a half inches now we only need to measure one now we want to put the this end where the over sewing is we want to hide that so that is going to be the piece that forms our pocket needs to be three and a half inches yeah three and a half oh i forgot for a minute three and a half inches no not yet let's have a look well it looks like a big three and a half inches oh that's right three and a half inches pin it pin it there right lovely we need it three and a half inches here lovely yeah that's a automatically three and a half inches these here so these two sides will be sewn together now it doesn't matter if the green shows not at all because it matches it's all a good match even if it didn't match it wouldn't matter so the green will probably pop out let's have a look at this one yes yeah you can see here the lining is peeping through here there so that's the next task then and then it really will be almost finished so a couple of minutes to do that and um we'll start finishing it off first funny thing just happened well funny or not um there was a, a thread just hanging and i was looking at it like i am now sort of admiring it and pulling it about to get it into some sort of shape and I noticed the thread <laughs> and I pulled the thread thinking it was tacking and oh my goodness a whole string of sequins just came unraveling raveled and they ended up on the table so that is why it might not look as sparkly as it did earlier I can't believe it fortunately i was eating a toffee so my neighbors will appreciate this i couldn't scream i couldn't scream because of this toffee but my hands shook oh my god i can't believe it so that is the only thing when you buy sequins that are pre-strung and you use them you only have to pull one thread and you undo them all so there's a bit of a, a lesson to be learned there i think for me <laughs> <laughs> so oh look i know where it should be and it's looking very plain anyway i let that pass this is now the pocket the pocket's there now there's a little bit of a dip here if you can see that dip i'm going to let that pass i'm not that bothered about that to be honest so i'm going to let that pass but the next thing to do is to get this in the little pad or the little leaf shall we say where the pins are going to go and that can go in there like that or can go there so now what did I do with that one right yes so it's going to go on the crease so make sure yeah lovely I'm just going to make I mean we don't have to be precise exact about this so the three that's lovely right now this will go on the crease now it's just above the start of the pocket so just open that up a little bit there now if you want to be precise you can measure from there and there to make sure you've got them center but i'm not doing that they look actually they look pretty um precise anyway so that's going to go there now and i'm going to stick 
a couple of pins in here there and there okay now I'm going to take the ribbon and it's the same ribbon that I used on this one I did find this these ribbons the red velvet and the green velvet but I think they might be just a little bit too narrow yes I don't like that effect so and this gold will actually complement or match little bits of gold here it won't it won't complement the sequence will it but it will complement you see these little bit areas of gold here glistening so that that is quite nice now what i'm going to do is just fold this in half and it's this is actually 24 so 25 26 inches long this is 26 inches long and I'm going to find the center of it there's the center and just pop a little pin there so that's the center now that pin needs to come there in the center of this and I can feel the pin the other side that's it and that needs to be sewn into place so to keep it still so it won't move under the sewing machine I'm going to put a couple of pins in here so I don't have to worry about it wriggling about when I'm sewing there and there okay now this is the line that I'm going to sew across there now just before I start sewing I will take that pin out and I should well I should do that now take the pin out and turn it around there then I can run the, the sewing machine the foot and the needle over that so that's in position I'm going to sew from here down there catching this so I'll be sewing right over this right across there to do and that. here they are both of them now the funny thing is this one the one that I've just made is far bigger or longer than that one and yet this one started off the same size as this so what do you think happened there that's strange um, so I'm just going to open them both up so that is that one um, and I love the colours on here. I have a preference already. I know which one I prefer. And there is this one as well. And now this one's taking on a different look because it's longer. I haven't put pins in here at the moment. Um, I will do, but... I like to carry about with me a magnifying glass now and I do suggest this I do advise this for anyone who loves their country walks who loves to look at their tree roots like we did in the last video who likes to look on the veins on the leaf or likes to look at a shell close up let's see if I can get that under the camera um, at the markings for some reason this well no they didn't come i bought a couple i'm actually looking at three here and i know there's one under the table none of them came with cases and i know in the past these get scratched very easily so this will be for my magnifying glass so i'm not sure about putting the pins there i'm not sure about this yet but um so there we are finished and my preference that one i prefer the colors on that one this one because i put the darker net on over it um it's taken on quite a um a dark look but the camera isn't actually picking it up so there we are now i hope you enjoyed that um 
I'm not sure if there'll be another video before Christmas, seeing as Christmas is only next week, but there will be one shortly after. I'm working on it now. So those of you who are going to stay, please, over Christmas, think about saving all the ribbons, the little interesting pieces of packaging you get, uh, interesting paper, and any fabric of bright, bold colours blue red green and yellow okay so that is your homework for the new year now please all keep safe do as your governments are telling you i know it's a bind it's a real nuisance um and hopefully if we do that and toe the line over the christmas period don't break the rules then we'll all be back again in january or before so take care and best wishes to you all and a very very happy christmas so bye bye now